Hey, look at all these interesting objects on the table. They are interesting, right? Do you know what we use them for? Well, the calculator can be used for adding and subtracting, the pair of compasses for drawing circles, and the scissors for cutting papers. Think harder, Turbo Girl. Hmm, I give up. I can't think of other uses for them other than those I have just told you. Well, they are going to help us understand the topic of angles better. Angles? What are they? Let me show you. Look at this calculator. When it is turned this way, angles are formed. I see. One angle, another angle. This is interesting. I didn't know that. Look at this pair of compasses. Can you see any angle? I think an angle is formed here. Am I right? Yes. Now try moving one of the arms of the compass. What have you noticed? Do you think the angle is still there? Yes, I can still see the angle. It looks bigger now, though. Now look carefully at what I'm going to show you. Flat, bent. When do you see an angle? I see an angle when you turn the screen of the calculator up. Good. Now look at the compasses. Closed, open. Hmm. An angle is formed when compasses are open. Good observation. Now, can you form an angle with this pair of scissors? No problem. When I open the scissors, like I am going to cut something, I form an angle here. Very good. So now you know what an angle is and how to form an angle. Turbo Girl, do you have a piece of paper to spare me? Paper? What can we do with it? Look here. Look at where the two edges of the paper meet. What do you see here? I know it's an angle. Good. This is a special angle. It is a right angle. Oh, I think there are three more right angles on the piece of paper. Am I right? Yes, you're correct. We show that they are right angles by marking them with this sign. That is interesting. A little box at each corner. More interesting things are coming your way. Do you want to know about them? Yes, please. Can you form right angles at the center of this piece of paper? I'll try. I can't seem to get any right angles at the center. Let me show you. Fold it into two like this, and then into two again. Here are the right angles. Wow! Four more right angles at the center. So can you tell me how many right angles can you see now? Eight right angles. <laughs> But there are more. Look more carefully, Turbo Girl. Oh, I know. These are also right angles. So there are sixteen right angles. Very good. So not only do we form angles by turning objects, we can also form angles when we fold paper. Now that you know what a right angle looks like, are you keen to try something a little more challenging? Of course. Good. We are going to try identify right angles that are within this figure. What? Within this figure? How can I do that? This is a plus sign. Well, before you start saying that you can't do it, let's think back to what we learned earlier. How did we identify right angles? We use the corner of a piece of square paper, but how? Wait, I know. We can use the same method to identify the right angles in this plus sign. Yes. Why don't you go ahead and identify the right angles within this figure now? Yes. This is a right angle. This is also a right angle. Hey, I think these are all the right angles in this figure. Yes, they are all. So how many are there? There are eight right angles inside the figure. Good work, Turbo Girl. Let's identify the right angles in this figure. Let me see. There are five angles inside this figure, but only this and this are right angles. So there are two right angles in this figure. Yes, well done. You've just identified the right angles within the figure correctly. 
Teacher, this piece of paper which I have been using to help me identify right angles is all crumpled. Is there any tool which is more hardy that I can use to test for right angles? Take a look at some of these objects here. Hey, the corner of this book is a right angle. The corner of this ruler is also a right angle. Yes, you have noticed. Besides a piece of paper, these objects also can help you test right angles. I know that now. This ruler is going to be very useful for testing right angles. Good work. Now let's move on to identify angles which are either smaller than or greater than a right angle. I think I know how. I want to show you. All the angles on this tabletop are right angles. Yes, but you have only identified the right angles. Can you point out an angle which is smaller than a right angle? Hmm. Look at the clock. The time is now five minutes to ten o'clock. The angle formed between the hands of the clock is smaller than a right angle. See here, only the hour hand touches the edge of my ruler. The minute hand is covered by my ruler. Very good. What about an angle which is greater than a right angle? Wait. Let me look around to see. I know. Look at this stool. The legs of the stool meet the top of the stool to form angles. This angle here is greater than a right angle. Only one edge touches the edge of the ruler. This other edge does not meet the other edge of the ruler. In fact, it exceeds it. This shows that the angle is greater than a right angle. Good, but you have to be careful because the stool and each of its legs form two angles. One is smaller than a right angle, and the other is greater than a right angle. Yes, teacher. All right, keep looking out for the other angles. Well done. Let's finish up this whole lesson on angles by identifying the different angles in different shapes. Sounds like fun. Let's look at the first shape. The square. Correct. How many angles are there in a square? There are one, two, three, four angles, and they are all right angles. Perfect answer. What about this shape? This is a rectangle. It also has four angles, and they are also all right angles. Excellent. Can you think of any shape which does have angles which are not right angles? Let me see. I know. In this triangle, these two angles are smaller than right angles, while the angle at the top is greater than right angle. You are correct, but not all triangles are like that. For example, this triangle. One of its angles is a right angle, and the other two angles are smaller than right angles. This is interesting. Can you identify the angles in this shape? This is a semicircle. It doesn't seem to have any angle. A semicircle is made up of a curved line and a straight line. No angle is formed when a curved line and a straight line meet. Thus, there is no angle in a semicircle. I understand now, teacher. Let's recap what you've learned about angles today. Okay, an angle is formed when two lines meet or something is turned. For example, the cutting blades of a pair of open scissors and the flipping of a page of book. There are three types of angles: the right angle. The angle that is smaller than a right angle, and the angle that is greater than a right angle. All these angles can be found in shapes and figures. However, there are no angles in shapes made with a curved line and a straight line, or curved lines only. I can create right angles on papers by folding them, and to identify and test for right angles, I can use the edge of a piece of paper, a book. Or a ruler. Good, you remembered everything. Well done.